the reason why it sounds the way it sounds is because I was dreaming about playing live. Yeah. So if 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 there was no pandemic, the song would have sounded very different. You've said in interviews, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you've been kind of okay just doing your thing in your home studio during the pandemic, uh, because that's what you're used to anyways. Um, how do you feel about that now, a year and a half in? Uh, oh, I'm bored out of my mind now. <laughs> I'm ready to, but I'm also, um, well, it's just funny, like a, a part of my life was unchanged because uh, I go into a room al alone every day. And so that part, was the way before the pandemic, it was during the pandemic, and it's after the pandemic. But I'm very excited to sort of feel more of the chaotic energy of actually being on tour and, and being in the world. Yeah. I've, I've been missing it pretty hard. Yeah, because uh, you've had a really productive year and a half, understatement, <laughs> uh, with lots of writing and production credits. And now I, I feel like uh, this is like the crown on top of all that work is going to be your <laughs> upcoming album, uh, Take the Sadness Out of Saturday Night. Um, how does it feel now, like, building up to your own album as opposed to other people's releases? Well, it's weird when, when you work on records with other people, um, you finish the record and then it stops, then you get to sort of enjoy it all from, you know, you just get to enjoy everything, you don't have to do anything. Um, s setting up a record is really, well, it's not only a lot of work, but it's also just really emotional. There's just so much you're, you're constantly talking about the album and sort of revisiting why you made it and how you made it. And of course, when you make things, you're making them kind of at this like future concept. Like mm -hmm. I always say, if you know something, then it's really not something you write about because you know it. But if you don't know something, but you feel it, you start writing about it. So this weird thing happens where um, you've been kind of writing about yourself in the future. And then uh, when you start talking about it and putting it out, it all starts to kind of come together and you very much understand why you had to write it. So so it, it's uh, the main difference is just how emotional it is. And how's that process like uh, for you? Because I can imagine, I you know, I'm not an artist, but I feel like if you're having these lyrics and all the things you wrote, maybe down in your iPhone notes or somewhere and then getting them together and speaking it, singing it out loud, that's a different level, right? Yeah, because it's a very private thing. So it's like, um, it's like you have these really insular thoughts and then all of a sudden one day you just kind of have a megaphone and you shout them yeah. towards everybody. It's, it's uh, kind of surreal. And what was the starting point for you for this record? What was the first thing, thought, melody, and, and when that came to your mind? Hard to pinpoint because um, I just tend to write a lot and then, you know, you could have lots of things and not have an album, so. Mm -hmm. But at some point about a year ago, I, I had a song called Chinatown, a song called Don't Go Dark, a song called 91 those three songs and they're very different songs, but um, the only one that's been released so far is Chinatown. But I started to understand what the album could be uh, both sonically and then thematically this uh, kind of journey of banging on the door of the next phase of your life and all the joy and discomfort that comes with, with trying to get through it. So I really, uh, that's when I was like, oh, okay, this that's the start of a body of work, not, not just some songs. I love what you say about, you know, the, the theme of, of that record. So could you explain it a little bit more to me? I found myself personally kind of, uh, you know, people always use the, the term like a crossroads. I don't, I don't think of it as a crossroads. I think mm. of it as doors. <laughs> and I like the idea of a doorway because it's a finite amount of space. So, you know, you can't bring all of your things through it. You can only bring some things. And that's always a nice metaphor for me with, you know, your baggage, not even just emotional baggage, but just all the things that make you who you are. And and so when you want to break through to another part of your life, 
uh, you know, which oh, sometimes you go years and you're not in that place, and other, and other times you're right in that place. I happen to have been in that place for quite a bit. It's a really interesting thing to write about because you're, like I said, there's this amazing hope and joy about wanting something new in the future. And then there's amazing discomfort about how you actually get it. Mm. And you kind of have to like rejigger your whole sense of things because you're no longer in control because you're saying, oh, I want to, I want to see and, and experience and, and have something else. So, so what the fuck does that do to you? And, uh, I, I could not shake this image of just a doorway. Try to get uh. through. And um, it became a theme for the album. A girl like you, my Chinatown baby, sitting on the front stoop, crying out crazy, I'll take you out of the city. Only right into the shadows. Cause I wanna find tomorrow. Yeah, I wanna find tomorrow. Of course, the legendary collaboration with Bruce Springsteen. Uh, how did that happen? Because I know uh, it's not just just a collaboration. <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty wild. Um, just just happened through friendship, um, very organically. And you know, if I had tried to plan it, it wouldn't have mm. felt right. It's a very delicate thing. I'm very inspired by his music. I uh, grew up in the same state, so a lot of the, the sentiments and the tones of it are very close to me. You know, we were just messing around. I showed him this, this song and he was messing around on it. And it wasn't until a couple of days later when I was playing it back that I actually thought to myself, um, this actually works and is holding this emotional quality that is really special. And um, against all odds, this kind of just totally works. And, and that's always the case with collaboration. You don't want to, um, you know, if you think something would be an interesting collaboration, then you might be functioning with something you know from the past rather than where someone's at in the future. So you kind of have to find these things in, in real organic ways. But it's, it's a real trip. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a amazing thing to have him on there. And as you mentioned, you, you know, you grew up with, with his music and, and now you've been friends for a while. And does your brain ever still go like, wait a second, that's Bruce and we're together on this song? I've just gotten to know him so much as on a human level that now I just kind of mm. uh, feel even an even bigger honor, which is when you when you actually know and care about someone to have them on your song is even even bigger than that feeling. we're talking about the upcoming record um stop making this hurt is one of my favorite songs I've been playing it a lot on dutch radio uh -huh. especially because you know if uh, personally i i just imagine a whole crowd screaming along to the chorus yeah. it could also be like i have this you know year and a half of sitting at home and just thinking back of festivals like how was a gig even yeah, it's how almost did impossible it to remember yeah and, and how is is that for you if you are listening if you're thinking about uh the song i can imagine it's you can't wait to play it live right <laughs> the reason why it sounds the way it sounds is because i was dreaming about playing live yeah so if if, if there was no pandemic the song would have sounded very different I, i got the band in the room and we played uh like we might never play again and that's a very specific thing that you can't make up um And so that's that's the sound of Stop Making This Hurt. Sound of a lot of the album of uh, we couldn't uh -huh. play and that's our lifeblood. So we took that that fire into the studio um, and it comes out of the record. You feel the like, is this thing gonna fly off the hinges? So what type of a, a, a person, a producer, a musician are you, have you been with this Bleachers record? Like uh, like if I'm hearing you talk about being together in the studio and having this relief and playing together, it sounds so joyful and playful, but I can also imagine there are, you know, a lot of hours, maybe in nighttime when you are just busy with perfection, perfection, perfection. How's that for you? There are different parts of the brain, you know, like you, um, <laughs> I feel like it's like you go out and you gather, you have these like inspirational moments in the studio or in writing. 
and you're not thinking, you're just gathering stuff. And then you, and then there's this other part of the brain where you go into more of like a, like an editor's place or something where then you're taking those things and you're like clinically making sense of them. They're opposites, they're opposite like mental spaces and, and they're both really important angles of making albums. Aside from the theme of the record we just talked about, what was uh, some kind of sound or, or um, yeah, a sound that inspired your album or you had the thought of, I want it to sound like this. I wanted to sound like uh, going from New York into New Jersey. Um, and that's a pretty specific thing in terms of the sounds that, and that's what the album does. It starts in New York and it's about breaking through and falling in love and, you know, taking yourself home to find a future. So it's it, the sound of it is that sonic journey from New York into New Jersey. I saw you with Ben playing at the bus to uh, yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. I was there because I get, you know, a very sick in transport, in public transport when I'm, you know, not focusing on the window or the route. It was okay. I was a little, you know, sometimes I'll make these plans without thinking about them. Just <laughs> they seem exciting. And it, it worked. It almost didn't work. We had one major moment where everything sort of broke and we were like, is this not going to work? But, um, It wasn't, it was, I didn't feel very sick. I, I was pretty focused on playing the songs and for some of those songs was the first time we played them. So it was, uh, it was an odd experience, but, but I always like to do it like that, you know, like try to find some, some interesting twist yeah. and just flip the whole thing on its head. A couple of weeks ago, you you had this huge release week with How Dare You Want More by Bleachers, Blouse by Claro, Solar Power by Lord, all in the same week. And uh, what was that week like for you? Because are you like eagerly anticipating on all the releases or do you kind of try to ignore the chaos and just focus on one thing? I, I clock it in like a personal way uh, where I'm just sort of like, this is really special. like. I love all of these records and they're all very different and I care about them in different ways and they're all and they're all here now and it just gives you like a like a little like just like a second to look back and think like well this is this is this is pretty wild because um, usually my head is down and I'm just kind of writing and, and working kind of thinking about what I'm doing but on a day like that where three things that mean a lot to you come out uh, pretty hard to not just kind of stop in your tracks and, and just take it in for a second. You mentioned pretty wild and I had to think of all the memes that were made of you. Did you saw them? Uh, some people sent me some stuff, but they were funny. I like them. What was one of your favorite? I was wondering. I, I like the one where they're throwing me around like there's a child, but it's like <laughs> yeah. Lana and Taylor and Lauren throwing me around. I think that's that one I like. Um, There's a lot of like, there's like a big culture where like, I'm like locked in someone's basement, I think. It's a, <laughs> um, I yeah. like all of this stuff. It's a uh, uh, fucking thrill. Three times when you feel it kicking in that sound. Remember when I pulled up and said get in the car and then cancel my plans just in case you call. Back when I was living for the hope of it all, for the hope of it all. You've mentioned them both, Lord and Taylor Swift have gone maybe in more organic directions as well recently. Uh, do you feel like that's a sign of the times? Are we looking for something that feels more grounded, more real also with the Bleach record? I do. I think that um, the climate crisis, political situation in a lot of places, it just the way our lives have become um, a little like sort of like sanitized and convenient with with certain services and and whatnot i just think that uh you know the, the further we go into some some dark places the more we want to reattach to uh 
who we are and where we come from, whether that's like the earth or the city. Uh, you know, I think I think one of the only things that everyone can agree on is how much they hate their phone. And I think those are interesting things to clock culture that we're all sort of, you know, begging to be back together, or begging to sort of come back to earth or something like that. And I always, you know, a lot of these sentiments show up in art before anything else. So I definitely feel it, you know, yeah. just a deeper connection to, or like a reconnection to, to something very honest. Stop.